Hey there, sixth grade. In this video, we're going to review some basic concepts involving decimals. The first thing I want to look at is a review of your place value charts. Now, in the last video, we talked about how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide whole numbers. So just as a review, uh, here are the place values for whole numbers. Uh, the digit furthest to the right uh, is what we call the ones or the units digit in a whole number. And then moving to the left, we have the tens digit, the hundreds, the thousands, the ten thousands, the hundred thousands, and the millions and we could keep going and going and going if we wanted to. Uh, and then with decimals, we have place values that we can name that are to the right of a decimal point. So if you look at this decimal uh, that we have, uh, the digits to the left of the decimal point will have the same place values as in a whole number. So this three here is in the ones place, the two is in the tens place, the four is in the hundreds, the eight is in the thousands, and the six is in the ten thousands. But to the right of the decimal point, uh, we have the following place values. This first zero is in the tenths place, T-E-N-T-H-S. -E -E the second zero is in the hundredths place, again with the T-H-S at the end. Uh, the one is in the thousandths place. And then the five is in the ten thousandths place. So really it's the mirror image uh, of what you would see uh, starting with the tenths place uh, on the whole number side, but you have those THSs at the end. Okay, so uh, that's the different place value uh, columns for whole numbers and decimals, which is very useful to review. Uh, when we're talking about comparing decimals, which is what we're going to look at first uh, in this video. So when we're comparing decimals, the first thing I want to do is show you how to do this uh, visually with what I call a uh, decimal grid. Uh, we're going to compare decimals using one of three signs, uh, using either a greater than sign, uh, which would be this sign right here in case you've forgotten, a less than sign, or an equal sign. And we're going to compare these decimals by shading decimal squares in each of these decimal or hundredths grids. And so what that means is, let's look at this first decimal I've given you, 0 0.39. Well, what does 0 0.39 really mean? Well, it means 39 hundredths is how we would say that in words. And if you look at this grid here, uh, it's a 10 by 10 grid, which means there are 100 squares in this grid. So to represent the decimal 39 hundredths, I just need to shade 39 out of 100 of these squares. So I'm going to do that. I can shade this first uh, column right here. This is 10 squares. So this would represent... 10 out of 100. I can shade the next column, which is 20 squares, so that's 20 out of 100. I can shade the next column, 30 squares, so that's 30 out of 100. And so that means I need to shade nine more squares, so I can shade everything but the last square in this fourth column. So I've now shaded 39 out of 100 squares, uh, which is the decimal 0 0.39, or 39 hundredths. Now I'm going to do the same thing with my next decimal, 0.29, which is 29 hundredths. I'm going to shade 29 out of 100 squares here. So here's 10, 20, 
And so now to compare these, just ask yourself, uh, which grid has more squares shaded? Well, that would be the grid to the left, the first grid. So that means that the decimal 39 hundredths, or 0.39, is greater than the decimal 29 hundredths, 0.29. Okay, number two, we're going to do the same thing. Uh, I have the decimal 0 0.03 or 3 hundredths uh, first. That means I'm just going to shade three squares, three out of 100. So there's one, two, and three. The next decimal is 0 0.30, uh, which is 30 out of 100, or 3 tenths is how else we could say that. So that means I need to shade, um, since we have 100 squares here, 30 out of the 100 squares. So here's 10 for my first column, 20 for my next column, and then 30 for my last column. So obviously, the grid on the right has more sh square shaded uh, than the one on the left, so that means that the decimal on the right, uh, 0 0.30, is more than the decimal on the left, 0 0.03, so we'll use a less than symbol here. 0 0.03 is less than 0 0.30. And then finally, number three, I'm comparing <coughs> 0.2, uh, which is 2 tenths, to 0 0.20, which is 20 hundredths. Uh, 0.2 means that I'm shading 2 out of every 10 squares that I have in my grid. So that just means I'm shading 2 squares per column here. So here's 2 out of 10, here's another 2 out of 10, another 2 out of 10, and then I'll just keep going all the way down. I'm shading the first 2 out of 10 squares in each column. And so how many squares do I have shaded all together? Well, that's 20 squares. Uh, the next decimal, 0 0.20, means I'm shading 20 out of 100 squares. So I'll shade my first column and my second column. So in each grid, I have how many squares shaded? Well, I have 20. So that means that these two decimals are actually equal to each other. 2 tenths is the same as 20 hundredths. Now, some of that might have seemed really basic and unnecessary to, for you, <laughs> but I wanted you to see um, that that's what decimals mean, okay? They mean parts out of 10 or out of 100 or out of 1,000. And so when we're comparing decimals, that's what we're really comparing. Uh, what do we have more of in terms of those parts? Now, there's a little bit easier way to compare decimals than just shading squares, and that's what I have here in this box. Uh, so to compare two decimals, we always look at the whole number parts first. And if the whole number parts are different, uh, then we just compare the whole number parts, everything to the left of the decimal point. For example, if we have 105.36, we're comparing that to 103.99. Since 105 is greater than 103, then this first decimal is greater uh, than the second decimal. But if the whole number parts are the same, then that's when we have to start going to the decimal places. So we first compare the tenths place uh, to see which uh, digit is larger. Uh, if the digits are the same in the tenths place, then we move on to the hundredths place and the thousandths place, etc., etc., until we find two digits that are not the same. So let's go to the next page now and practice comparing decimals without uh, drawing those uh, decimal grids. So for number four, we have the decimal 1.387, which we'll compare to 1.837. So I'm going to start out with my uh, whole number digits. I've got a one and a one. Those are the same. So now I need to move on to my tenths place. I have a three in the tenths place here and an eight in the tenths place here. Well, eight is larger than three, so that means this decimal, 1.837, is the larger. So I'm going to use a less than sign here to show that 1.387 is less than 1.837. Next, I have 62.35 compared with 61.359. In this case, my whole number parts are different. This is a 62 and this is a 61, so I can use a greater than sign here since 62 is greater than 61. Number six, my whole number parts are eight and eight. Those are the same, so now I'll go on to uh, my tenths place, zero and zero. Those are the same digits, so I need to go to the hundredths place now, five and five. 
And since those are the same, now I need to go to the thousandths place. Well, 8.05 does not have anything in its thousandths place, so here I can add a zero in the thousandths place, and now I can compare zero to one. One is larger than zero, so that means that 8.051 will be the larger uh, number, so I'll use a less than sign to represent that. And then finally, number seven, 67.01 compared to 67.1. The whole number parts are the same, so now we'll move on to the tenths place. I have a zero here and a one here. Since one is greater than zero, that means that 67.1 is the larger number, so I need, need to use, again, a less than sign to show that. So that's comparing decimals. Now we're going to take a look at how to round decimals. Uh, when we're rounding, I have um, a little saying here in this box that will hopefully help you uh, remember how to round. We always look at the place value we are rounding to, and then we circle that digit, and then after that, we look right next door. Four or smaller, we just ignore. Five or larger, we add one more. And so let's apply this saying now to some of the decimals in this chart. We're not going to go through every cell value in this chart in the video, uh, but we're going to go through a few, and then I'll have you fill out the rest of it on your own. So let's look first of all at the number 23.1768, and I want to round this number to the nearest tens place. So that what that means is I'm going to circle the tens place in this number, which would be my 2. Then I'm going to look to the right of that 2, and one of two things can happen here. I could just ignore everything and round this to 20, or I could round this up to the next uh, tens number, and that would become 30. And it's all based on what's to the right of my 2. If that number to the right is 4 or smaller, then we just ignore, in which case this number would round to 20. But if that number is 5 or larger, then we add one more to the 2, and it becomes 30. Since 3 is part of the 4 or smaller category, that means I just ignore, and so this rounds to 20. Now let's look at the number 435.9008. Again, I want to round this to the nearest tens place, so I circle the tens digit, which is 3. That means this will round to either 430 or 440. I look to the right, I have a 5. 5 is part of the 5 or larger, add one more. So this rounds to 440 by adding one more to that 3. Now I'm going to look at 45.3455, and I'm going to round this to the nearest whole. So I'm going to look at the units digit in this number, which would be the 5. So this will round to either 45 or 46. If I look to the right of 5, I have a 3. 3 is part of the 4 or smaller, just ignore. So I just ignore, and this is 45. Now I'm going to look again at uh, 435.9008. The units digit here is the 5, so this will be 435 or 436. To the right is a 9, so I need to add one more, and this becomes 436. Okay, next I'm going to look at 123.3578. I want to round this to the nearest tenth. So in the tenths place is a 3, to the right of the 3 is a 5, so I need to add one more to this 3, and this becomes 123.4. Okay, next uh, I'm going to round my last number, 236.0895, to the nearest hundredth place. So the 8 is in the hundredth spot. If I look to the right of the 8, I have a 9, and so this will become... 236.09. And then finally, I want to round my last number again, 236.0895, to the nearest thousandths place. The thousandths place has a 9. If I look to the right of the 9, I see a 5. So 5 or larger, add one more. Well, if I add one more to 9, what do I get? I get a 10. And so that means I need to carry that 1 in my 10 over to the next place, which is an 8. And so that 8 would then become a 9. 
So rounding to the nearest thousands place, I actually get the number 236.090. This is the same as 236.09, but because it asked us to round to the nearest thousandths, I do want to make sure I include this last zero just so we can show that we rounded all the way to the thousands place. All right, what I would like you to do uh, either now or at the end of the video is fill out the rest of this chart, and then we're going to check this in class the next time I see you. We do have one more, though, and that's on the back side here. This last part is about estimating decimals. So when we're estimating decimals, we will round each decimal to either the nearest whole, 10, or 100, based on the directions, and then we'll add, subtract, multiply, or divide from there. So remember, estimating, you don't get exact answers. You round and get an approximate answer. So for number 9, we're going to estimate the sum, which means we're adding, uh, to the nearest whole number. So we're going to round each of these decimals to the nearest whole number. 35.87 rounded to the nearest whole is 36. And then 103.89 rounded to the nearest whole is 104. So I'm going to add... 36 plus 104, and so that gives me an approximate answer of 140. Okay, next I'm going to estimate the difference, which means I'm subtracting to the nearest tens place. So I'm rounding each of these numbers to the nearest tens. 284.92 uh, would become 280, and then 42.04 would just be 40, 280 minus 40 is going to be 240. Number 11, I'm estimating the product, which means we're multiplying to the nearest whole number. 14.39 to the nearest whole is 14, and 22.98 to the nearest whole is 23. So I'm going to do 23 times 14. We'll review our multiplication skills from the last video. And here we get 322. Okay, and then finally, number 12, we're rounding or we're estimating the quotient, so a division problem to the nearest 10. So we're going to round each of these uh, numbers to the nearest 10. 107.55 to the nearest 10 is 110. 14.87 to the nearest 10 is 10. So I'm going to divide 110 by 10. 10 will go into 11 one whole time. And so I'll subtract 10 uh, to get 1 and then bring down my 0. And then 10 will go into 10 again one whole time. So I get an answer of 11 as my estimation here. Okay, if you had any questions over this video, just like the last time, I want you to write those down so that you remember to ask those in class. And until then, have a nice day. You're all wonderful people. Take care.